So oh, hello everyone welcome back to the channel today we are going to talk about Mintra hacker ramp which is a hackathon opportunity by Mintra and through this you can earn heavy cash prizes like around rupees 4 lakh rupees and also get an opportunity to get an internship or a full time offer with Mintra so for this we have with us Anushka who is currently a software engineer at Mintra and she has cleared the Mintra hacker ramp hackathon three times so one was external two times were internal she has also cleared JPMC code for good hackathon. So she's going to tell us all about how, you know, what is the eligibility and from that, how she got selected and how you can get selected too. So Anushka is the perfect person for all of this. So hello, Anushka. Welcome to the channel. Hi, Misha. Thank you for inviting me here to the podcast. I know it. the process of Hackeram didn't happen in the last two, three years. I know this is uh, happening after two, three years. So a lot of students might want to know how it, how things go about. Because during these two years also, people used to message me on LinkedIn regarding uh, how do we get an internship, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this will really help them. Thank you for doing this. OK, OK, awesome. So let's get started without further ado. My first question is why you should apply to this opportunity. Like, what are the perks if I apply to Mintra Hacker Amp? So firstly, if you want a job or an internship at Mintra, if you are from a tier three, tier three or tier two college, and even from a uh, lesser known IIT and IT college, so Mintra doesn't come on campus. So this is the only way you can get an internship or a job. So uh, while I was participating, I did not even know that PPA opportunity exists. I just participated for the exposure because around 6,000 teams participate. So there are two hacker ramps, basically. One is only for IITNs, wherein boys and girls both are allowed. And this one is only for females, where uh, all the colleges are allowed, but only for females, as it is said. So uh, the, the cash prices are pretty good. During my time, it was for the first winner, there was 1,50,000. Second team was 1 lakh, etc. But now I think it's 4 lakh. So I think it's a great opportunity. You should definitely participate. and. Enjoying the hackathon, you get to learn, you get exposure, you get to meet the Mintra's uh, associate architect or architect. You get to be mentored by them. So I think it's a big thing to uh, do it in your VTech journey. And who all are eligible for this hackathon? So for this hackathon, um, females are eligible for this uh, Mintra Hacker Ram V4 She Hackathon, which is uh, eligible for all college students. Uh, for all colleges, tier one, tier two, tier three, whatever college you are in, you need to be in your second, third, or fourth year of BTEC, or in your MTEC, you can be in your first and second year, or in your dual degree, you can be in your uh, third, fourth, fifth year. Uh, the rest of the students are not eligible, as uh, if you are in your second year, let's say in your BTEC, you get an opportunity to be, do a PPI, that is pre placement interview for your internship. But if you are in your fourth year, you get an interview directly for your job offer. Okay, okay. And uh, yeah, if you are in your first year of BTEC, you are not eligible to participate. If you are in your first or second year of dual degree, you are not eligible to participate. And you need to register in teams of two or three. And uh, apart from that, you can also have cross teams, like teams from different colleges are allowed. So all of this is mentioned on the Unstop website. So I'll put the link in the description and you can just go and check out uh, what is the eligibility criteria. But m uh, most of the things we have covered. Cool. So uh, next is what is the program structure? Like what is the first phase? What is the first step? Then the second, the third, the fourth, just in brief. Uh, so once you register on uh, Unstop, you get an option to create a team or join a team. So you can do either of that. Once you do that, you have a deadline of uh, submission, submitting your ideas in a PPT format. So once you do that, there is a deadline. Uh, let's say for 15 days, you have time to finish and complete that and submit it. After that, you get uh, the second round, that is preparation, wherein you prepare your prototype. You show it to the mentors, which are associate architects or architects from Mintra. They generally guide you on what to do in your next step. Then you have your semifinals and then your finals. So it, during our time, it, there were 6,000 teams who started. And the, in the semifinals, there were around 11 teams. OK, so the first uh, step is the ideation phase and in which you have to, you know, submit your idea as a PPT. So I think this is the most important because you will if you don't get selected in this. Uh, and I think this is the most competitive also because very few teams get selected. So what are your like, how does it work? What was your idea and what do you think are some things you should keep in mind while making an idea for the Hacker Amp hackathon? 
So this is not just for hackathon. This is for any hackathon. I'll suggest that if you have a team of two to three, uh, if all of you have different ideas, let's say one of them have an idea of um, making a reverse image search, one of them have it of customization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I'll say don't choose one. Combine all of it into one, and make three different three different things. So that later on, if one doesn't work out, you still have two to show. Um, I'll suggest a feature heavy. Um, prototype instead of having just one feature that always helps because you have an edge and the there are themes actually in the hack in the hackathon our theme was customer experience which we chose there are other themes i think this year also they have it so you can choose and certainly ideate on it and you can you can connect with mintra employees to know how what are the things that they are moving forward with let's say uh, now they are moving towards fast fashion or dpc so you think in that direction. That is what I'll suggest. Uh, yeah, so the theme has not yet been uh, declared. So the themes will be declared, I think, on 13th and 24th June. Not sure which of these dates. So the theme has not been declared. But yeah, some general tips that as Anushka mentioned that you should keep in mind. And I also think that you can also probably try to add AI somewhere because it's trending and all the companies want to use AI somehow. So I, that's just what I personally feel. But uh, whatever your use case is, based on that, you can think, yeah. So the next phase is the implementation. So where you have to implement. So how is this phase and what are some tips that you can give for this phase? So um, as we discussed in the last uh, section that you need to make it feature heavy. So I suggest that you make two to three features at least and divide it amongst you two or three people, how many ever you are in the team and focus on learning. Don't focus on um, you know, you have to finish this task anyhow, copy paste it somehow and just do it. I suggest that you learn uh, the tech stack or the technology that you don't know and then try to make something new that is not, uh, you know, even if it's there, it's fine. Just try to do it on your own. I suggest that. And if it's not getting implemented, try to be uh, do a good teamwork and do it. During our time, it was online as it was COVID time 2021. So we had to manage day night. Um, after college, we had exams also, and we used to do it online uh, during meets, etc., and discuss progress. So I suggest that you keep progress bars and uh, connect after each each day or two three days in the gap of two three days and see how it how it is working out. If the feature is not working out right, I suggest that you try to you know twist it, turn it somehow, and I suggest you have the jugard mentality and try to make it work. You can share your own experience also. Like, and this time there are nine days to implement. So, how many days did you guys get, and how was it? So, ours we had a long time to implement, not nine days exactly. I think we had around 15, 10 to 15 days, not that much, also, but still, I think better than this time. So, what we did was um, we divided, uh, as I said, feature wise, and uh, so to our th we had three ideas. One was reverse image search directly using the color, which let's say if you want to search yellow or uh, Muave or any color, that color you cannot uh, select in the Mintra filter. So we wanted to do an exact color match and do the search. So we did that reverse image search. The second was accessory matcher. So uh, if you put an Indian dress, it will show you Indian accessories and something like that and the third was personalization that is we researched about mintra how it started it started as a gifting company so if you have a t-shirt they uh, used to print something on it and if you want to write happy birthday whatever they used to print it personalize it and gift it so we wanted to bring back that element again so we used implemented it using js canvas the last part the personalization the reverse image search and the accessory matcher were using the same tech stack which technology, which is, again, we used ML in that. Uh, you can find many algorithms online, how to do reverse image search. There are many open source um, data sets for fashion. You can use that to train your model and get results accordingly. You can manipulate data uh, for your prototype and show the results because they have obviously given you nine days to implement it. It cannot be end to end. So try making the uh, ML model and to connect it with the front end. It's OK if you don't have you know, a database, etc. Just try to run it and show it. That is uh, fine if that works. If it is not working, record a video and keep 
of whatever time it was working at. And if it doesn't work in the present presentation time, it's fine. Just show the video. They'll accept it. Don't panic, I'll suggest. Just try to make it work somehow. OK, cool. And uh, uh, OK, so what happens after the implementation phase? Like how many teams get selected? And what is the pre-finale thing? So so in pre-finale, there were around, uh, in semi-finals, there were around 11 teams, um, out of uh, which there were uh, teams from IITs also and uh, different colleges. So after that, we were given a chance to see each other virtually. We did not know who each other, one of, I mean, who were there in the semifinals. In the Zoom meet, they called us and then they allotted uh, meeting rooms with mentors in it. And then the mentors used to tell us uh, what is good in our idea and what is bad. So our mentor straight up told us, your idea is not good, just change the entire thing. But um, we didn't listen to him entirely we did tweak a little thing a uh, little things here and there but we didn't tweak it entirely we didn't change it and after that uh, there is again your mentors uh, after this mentoring session they again shortlist a few people you have to submit your um, entire uh, working model uh, whatever you have made uh, again in a video format they again shortlist people and then you have finals in finals there were six teams so that's how it happened in seven finals Okay, and uh, and any tips that you can share at this point for? So I'd suggest that be confident about your idea, even if your mentor says it's completely useless. But just trust in your process because sometimes uh, Mintra is looking for something that even the uh, architects don't know because architects look into the tech part of it. They don't look into the um, business side of it. Let's say Mintra is expanding on VPC. And you have made something related to BPC. Even though it is not that good tech-wise, they might like it because uh, the final round judges are going to be more business people. Uh, so, BPC so, stands for? Uh, uh, beauty and personal care. OK, good. So I think one important thing is that you need to understand what all Mitra is working on and you know, what it wants to become in the next few years. I think that is important. OK, cool. And then what happened next when you reached the finals? So when we reached the finals, it was a four hour long uh, semi -final, uh, finals because each team were presenting their ideas. They were given a time span of, let's say, 12 minutes. And then there were Q&A. So each team took at least half an hour. So six teams took half an hour each. Our slot was second. Um, but even if you look at other teams' ideas, you will get a very overwhelming feeling and you'll feel complex that other people's ideas are better than yours we saw um you know a full virtual reality mall people created in and stuff like that this, this was back in the year 2021 so such things were very cool to have as an idea uh but at the end of the day they only want what business wants so if your idea is let's the a team who came first, so we came second in the hackathon. The team who came first, they made, um, you know, a cloth extraction, a cloth reverse image search from a video. Let's say if you're playing a video on screen, you'll get pops, pop ups of Mintra ads that, hey, this cloth is available in Mintra, this cloth is available. So that is what Mintra was working on back then. Even we didn't know that. So that's why they came first. And that team had three people, but only one of them secured a PPI, that is an internship offer. So doesn't so being in the top three doesn't guarantee that you will definitely get a job offer. The job offer, etc., happens only through your interview. This is just a part of the hackathon. So if you just are looking for a PPI opportunity, you can only concentrate till semi-finals because your job is done there. All the semi-finalists get an opportunity to interview, and later you can you know chill if you don't want money. It's fine. <laughs> so how many people? Uh, like you said, eleven teams were there in the semi-finals, right? Yeah. OK, so 11, if we say like three people, so almost 33 people got uh, yeah. internship or full-time like interview opportunities. So OK, coming to the next question, how was the like, interview part of it, like hackathon part we've discussed? How What were the questions that were asked in the interviews? And you know how are, in general, the interviews after HackerRamp? So the uh, interviews uh, for internships happened in three rounds. The first one was the basic DSA. Um, Basic DSA may they asked about array, string, linked list, maps, easy topics. Then in the second round, they asked about uh, DP, 
graphs etc so you have to study those topics and the last one was again a little bit of dsa and a uh, hiring manager round combined so um, they were checking your behavior as well and all three rounds if you have a positive response in even two of them it's fine you can proceed further and then if you if this interview was for internship you have to interview again for your full time conversion after your internship period if you are for, from a tier 3 college or a tier 2 college this doesn't apply to iitns uh, so i had to interview again three rounds to convert my internship to a ppu and my project was also one of the criterias that they judged on uh, so i didn't do well in my ppo conversion interview but my project was uh, done very well so my manager vouched for me out of those three only one was positive the interview uh, response but my manager vouched for me and that's how i converted and um, yeah so it is a pretty tough process after the uh, hacker hacker ramp you do have one or two months to prepare so i suggest that first focus on the hackathon and then uh, you have time to prepare for the interviews as well okay and when you talk when you said that when you converted from internship to full time in that case uh, you said that your pro your interviews didn't go well but your project so when you when refer to project it means the internship project right yeah so, okay so internship to people conversion also depends on your project as well as how your interviews go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, before we go, uh, what is what are some tips for hackathons since you have also cleared code for good and also what do you think are in general tips for someone who's starting out with hackathons? So firstly, when I heard about hackathons, I used to think that this is only for hackers, ethical hacking, etc. I did not know what hackathons is in my first and second year uh, till my second year mid. But I'll suggest that don't be scared of terms. Just go for it. You'll understand with the go uh, what the things are um, even though it's a hectic process let's say the hackathon can be a 24 hour hackathon or a one month long hackathon as this mintra one is uh, it is going to be a journey in itself you're going to learn a lot of things it is going to be full of exposure you get to network with people and have fun with your friends bond more and uh, also one more thing uh, don't make hackathon teams based on who your friends are firstly uh, know who people know people who have participated in hackathons before if you are a newbie uh, learn from them participate with them so in my hackathon journey i participated with jani and sari who were from my college but i did not speak to them before this hackathon i just heard of them that uh, they have participated in uh, one or two hackathons previously and in my college being from a tier 3 college no uh, the exposure wasn't that much only five six, handful of people knew what things were. So I just dived in with them. I asked them if they would like to participate and they agreed. So firstly, just reach out to people who are experienced, try to uh, form teams with them, learn on the way, and then you can build up on that and uh, you know challenge yourself. If you are good at front end, try to do back end at ML as well. That's what I'll suggest for a hack. Uh, finally, for some DSA tips, because you also cleared the interviews and also, uh, what was your strategy to prepare for DSA? So, um, I started making videos on YouTube, uh, solving a question on lead code. Just, uh, I just turned on my Zoom and solved one question on, of lead code and tried to explain it to the camera or whatever and uploaded it on YouTube. I did not care about the views, etc. I just wanted to see how confident I was while explaining. If I am stuttering, if I am stopping in between, if I'm not able to convey my thoughts, I would record another video the next day of a different question and try to improve on that. So uh, I suggest doing the same thing. Uh, for DSA, I used to solve 10 questions a day um, in lead code. Two of them were easy, three of them were medium, five of them were hard. I used to try, uh, you know, jumbling up the order and challenging myself on new, new topics. If I didn't know, I used to just go on YouTube, search for a solution of Striver or whoever had solved it, watch it or read the discussion and try to solve it on my own. And that's how I suggest you to prepare for it. Okay, five DSA, five lead code hard questions per day seems a task to me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's impressive. So cool then, I think we've covered most of the things. And uh, I'll also put Anushka's uh, socials in the description. So if you have any doubts, you can ping her and hopefully she'll reply. So yeah, yeah. And, uh, there's one unstopped blog also that Anushka had wrote. Uh, so we can also put that link in the description. 
and also the registration link will be in the description so with that thank you so much anushka for coming and you know spending time here and i hope this video will be useful for people thank you for this video